On behalf of the League of Young Voters, welcome to So You Think You Can Mayor. Woo! Thank you all for coming and participating in this really historic civic forum. My name is Suzanne Murphy. I am from WMPG, Southern Maine Community Radio from the University of Southern Maine. Yeah. Thank you. We are very pleased to have all 15 of Portland's mayoral candidates with us this evening. You will be meeting them shortly in groups of three. But first, let's meet the League of Young Voters Election Committee. Each year, the League members step onto the Elections Committee to interview all the candidates in Portland and make recommendations to our larger membership on our endorsements for office. Let's meet this year's Elections Committee. In the red t-shirts, they are Wells Lyons, Patrick Banks, Eric Poulin, Steve Berry, Patrick Roche, and this year's chair, Emma Hallis O'Connor. We also have some sponsors to thank for this evening. We're very, very happy to have uh, these sponsors for So You Think You Can Mayor. They are WMPG Community Radio, Lucid Stage, Bicycle Coalition of Maine, Maine People's Alliance, East Deering Neighborhood Association, Western Promenade Neighborhood Association, Riverton Neighborhood Association, University Neighborhood Association, Munjoy Hill Neighborhood Association, and Libbytown, Libbytown Neighborhood Association. This event could also not have been complete tonight without the participation of United Way and Portland Trail, so thanks to them. Our goal this evening is to meet these 15 candidates and for most of you probably get a first look at their approach to running our great city. We'll get a glimpse of the entire field and we look forward to getting to know these candidates even better over the coming weeks. But as you can tell, right now, by now, we're doing things a little bit differently this year. The Elections Committee, along with the help of numerous volunteers and League staff, has come up with a forum format that will add some flair and fun to our usual candidate forum. We thank our candidates very much for joining us in taking a creative route to discussing the critical issues in our community. Okay. Here are the ground rules. Are you ready? This is how it's all going to work. You may wonder, how are we going to do 15 people? <laughs> Candidates will come up in groups of three to answer questions within a given topic. These groups have been randomly chosen. Everybody's name went into a hat, and this is how the groups came out. Secondly, topics will be chosen by a spin of the wheel. Is that not the coolest thing over there? And those, the eight categories, just for those who don't want to crane their neck around, and for anyone who may be uh, hearing this later on a radio or television broadcast, the topics are sustainable transportation, education, housing, economy, neighborhood development, leadership and advocacy, justice, and a wild card category, which contains questions on topics not covered by any of the other seven. Both audience and league member questions will be asked in each topic, and each candidate will answer one question, a different question, each one in the same topic. At the end of that round, candidates will have a chance to play their challenge card and ask any fellow candidate a question of their choosing. And we'll do as many rounds as we can fit in a six minute period. So we're hoping to mix it up a little bit and be able to get the candidates to talk to each other as well as answering the questions that have been submitted to them. We do wanna remind our candidates that they are invited to speak for no more than 90 seconds in their response questions. Lisa McNeil is our timekeeper who, Lisa is also the designer of this fabulous set. So let's hear it from Lisa. I am the enforcer. 
As you entered, you should have received a forum ballot at the door. Before you leave tonight, we do ask that you fill out that ballot with your ranked choice vote for mayor, given what you've seen and heard here tonight. The results of this informal poll will be posted on our website, maine.theleague.com, at noon tomorrow. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, let's just take a minute and turn off our phones, everybody, please. We really appreciate that. All right, is everybody ready? Yeah. Everybody ready? All right, so let's meet our first group of three mayoral candidates. Come on up. Group one, here they come. <laughs> okay. Of these, we, what, what we're going to do is start out by having each one introduce themselves by name, neighborhood, and occupation. You will then have 90 seconds to answer this question. What is the biggest challenge you will face as mayor of Portland and how will you overcome it? We're gonna start with Ralph Carmona. Name, neighborhood, occupation, please. Uh, my name's uh, Ralph Carmona. I live in Munjoy Hill. I'm a retired public affairs executive and educator. And what is the biggest challenge you will face as mayor and how will you overcome it? Well, 90 the big, seconds. The biggest challenge I'm trying to overcome it now as a candidate is that of increasing uh, revenues uh, for the city of uh, Portland and avoiding property tax increases in the process. And in addition to that, maintaining uh, public services all in one process. That's going to involve taking action, immediate action on existing uh, projects and initiatives and and ballot measures. This is why I took a position, a public position, and the only candidate to do so in support of the Civic Center a renovation bond measure. It's why I'm supporting the Thompson's Point uh, project. This is increased revenue, no tax increases, and it's going to increase consumer demand and, cons and, and uh, business confidence in the city. Uh, it's also going to involve lobbying at the, at the state and at the, uh, at the federal level in terms of trying to increase some stimulus dollars. As you note, uh, the uh, Adam uh, uh, Street project involved uh, millions of dollars in federal and state stimulus uh, funds. Those are going to go away, and we need to increase support for that project. Do I have time left? Yes. Oh, great, great. Uh, in addition to that, I think part of the, the, the effort is going to involve going out to uh, associations at the national level, de uh, developing a counter uh, uh, sort of a response uh, uh, in, 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 on issues involving economic development nationwide. That's going to be very important to do that as uh, the mayor of a national city, be a nation's city mayor, a leader that's going to represent the largest city in the state. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Marcos Miller. Hi, I'm Marcos Miller. I live on Munja Hill, and I teach Spanish at Deering High School. And what is your answer to what is the biggest challenge you will face as mayor of Portland, and how will you overcome it? Um, the new position of mayor um, really calls for somebody with collaborative skills, um, a consensus builder, somebody that can define a common vision for the city. And I think the biggest challenge is going to be in stating that role in City Hall where that has not always been the case. In fact, that's been sorely lacking in many cases. That is exactly why I am running as mayor. I have the skills as a teacher and as a community organizer to bring people together, find our common vision, and to take productive steps forward to make those visions reality. Um, I've walked the path not of a traditional politician, but of a civic leader. Um, working to bring people together to facilitate um, our goals and consensus building. One example of the work that I've done is on Franklin Street, where I've worked with business leaders, neighborhood leaders from across the city, and state officials at DOT, in both the Baldacci administration and the LePage administration, to create a common vision that turned its back on widening Franklin Street and instead is now advancing a vision of a multi-use corridor um, for mixed-use development. Um, that's the vision that I can bring as a collaborator. Thank you, Marcos Miller. Ethan Strimling, you're next. Thanks. Uh, my name is Ethan Strimling. I'm the CEO at LearningWorks. 
and I uh, live in the West End. I'm a former state senator for this district, and thank you very much for having this forum tonight. It's great. I've been at many of the forums with the League, and they've always been uh, fun, interesting, and very, uh, very intellectually challenging, so I appreciate this work. The, the number one issue, I think, for me in getting to City Hall, the issue we have to deal with is trying to create more jobs. Right now, there's 10 to 15 percent vacancy downtown, and we are starting to feel it, I think, in our stores and in our restaurants and in our shops. And we have to find ways to get more businesses to come in so that we can have more people, so that we can begin to generate the income that we need to keep our property taxes level and perhaps even bring them down. You know, we have a myriad of problems in the city, clearly, but we have a great city, but it seems great in spite of our city government. The culture of City Hall has to change, and that's really the, the hardest part, I think, of any leader. I run Learning Works, as I mentioned before, and we've gone through a transformation in the last two years in which we really changed our culture and found a way to focus on excellence and make customer service first, and we now serve twice as many immigrants and refugees and low-income kids and kids in after-school programs that we served before, and they're getting better outcomes than they've ever had. That's crucial to the future of this city, and that's the challenge that any of us will have. Thank you, Ethan Strimling. N and now we will move on to the wheel. Ralph Carmona, would you do us the honors, please, and spin the wheel? I feel like a beauty queen. Yeah. <laughs> Just call him Vanna. All right. Wild. Here we go. Sustainable transportation. No, it's in no. wild. <coughs> What's that? It's in wild. It didn't quite make it. Yeah. Oh, oh I, it's, it's a wild card? I, it looks like sustainable. All right, wild card, sorry. Great wild card. May I have the questions, please? Okay, we're starting with the wild card. That's fun, huh? All right, Ralph Carmona, okay. your question in, is from the audience. While you've been knocking on doors and meeting voters, what is the one issue you've never considered before that you've heard people express concern about? And what is your plan to address it? Well, the, the, the one thing that, uh, that I'd never really considered would come out so strongly and vehemently is the issue having to do with immigration. Uh, I, it, I had that on a number of occasions, but uh, the, the most critical uh, time came, I'm an American of Mexican descent, and uh, this one guy, he was a staunch Republican, he had a cigarette, smoking his cigarette, and I said, I want to get your support. How, how uh, and he says, you can't solve my problem. I said, well, well let's, let's ask me the question. I'll respond to it, let's, because I want to get your support. And he said, well, okay. Uh, the problem is those, and he used colorful language, those Mexican immigrants. I, and uh, I said, well, what, what, what's your solution to the problem? He says, I'd build a wall around the country, and I'd have an entry point. And if they come near the wall and not near the entry point, I'd shoot them. And I said, you'd shoot them, huh? He said, yep, I would shoot them. I said, well, uh, you're a straight shooter, no pun intended. I said, but, you know, I'm going to tell you what I tell my wife. And that is that I don't agree with you on everything. And uh, the second thing I think that you need to understand is that um, uh, we live in a country of immigration a country of folks who uh, come from all, all parts of the world, and we need to make immigration creative, not destructive. In the end, he heard me out. It was his anger about immigration being chaotic. And in the end, he came across as my supporter. Thank you. Okay. Ralph, Ralph Carmona, thank you. All right, our second question in the wild category, wild card, is from the League Elections Committee. And Marcos Miller, this is for you. What one policy or citywide initiative would you most like to see enacted during your term as mayor? Um, one of my signature issue, issues is um, getting moving on developing Bayside. We've had a plan for 10 years to create a new mixed-use neighborhood in Bayside, and um, we have a long way to go on getting moving on that. So I would love to see public works get moved out to Riverside as we planned, have Th hundreds if not thousands of new home units built there, bringing um, new homeowners into Bayside, creating the kind of density we need to support um, public transportation. We've got existing infrastructure there. We have great opportunities to be lowering our tax base through development, attracting the kinds of workers that we want who are going to support our schools, build our businesses, and contribute to our culture. Um, 
Bayside is ripe, and that is one example of the vision I have for Portland in creating a more sustainable future for ourselves and for our future generations, too. Thank you, Marcos Miller. Now, Ethan Strimling, for you, the question is from uh, United Way. Portland has a vibrant and growing multicultural population. To remain globally competitive, Maine and Portland must identify ways to maximize the potential contributions of foreign-born residents. As mayor of Portland, what policies and practices would you promote to help foreign-born residents, and what ideas do you have for increasing our collective diversity and cultural competency in Portland? It's a great question and a very important question and certainly related to what it was that Ralph was talking about, and I've certainly run into that at a lot of doors, and I'm glad you stayed and talked to him and tried to change one heart and one mind. It, it's very important that we try to bring in, uh, you know, the, if, if we did not have the immigrants into this city, we would have lost thousands of people in terms of population over the last few years, over the last 10 years. At Learning Works, where I mentioned before, the organization that I run, we work with immigrants and refugees in English language classes and basic literacy. And one of the things that's the most frustrating that we find is that folks who come here from other countries come here with medical degrees and they're, they're superintendents of school districts that are 10 times the size of the city of Portland or their government officials or, you know, they're dignitaries and they come here and the only job that they can get, even though they bring all this intellectual capacity and all this emotional energy and this tremendous community spirit, the only job they can get may be cleaning offices late at night because we don't recognize other credentials, because we don't understand, we don't have the cultural competence to see somebody's strengths and make them part of our community. And that's really what we need to focus on more than anything. And English language classes, without question, we've got to teach people to read and speak English as quickly as possible. It's the best way to get people integrated into our community. Thank you, Ethan Strimling. All right, and now these gentlemen will participate in what is called our challenge round. Each candidate has been given a challenge card. When I ring my bell, the first person to show their card across the, stu the uh, bureau there <laughs> will be able to ask a question of any candidate. And as usual, the answer will be 90 seconds. So are we ready? Go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ralph Carmona, what is, who are you challenging? <laughs> I, I challenge Jed Rashband. And uh, Jed, <laughs> it's your lucky night, Jed. Uh, the question is this, Jed: You at at the last forum you mentioned that um, uh, you uh, were the only candidate who worked for a profit-making company, a, uh, and 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 that's fine. Uh, but part of that was actually a consulting business, as I understand it and clarified, that involved passing of this initiative to allow for an elected mayor. Some would view that as a conflict. But that aside, you know, you, you, you said that, 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 that as a small business person, that gives you expertise on public policy. Do you really believe being a small business person gives you expertise on broad sweeping public policy? Because I work with large banks, other institutions, and uh, on public policy. I've never been a small business owner. The answer is absolutely, <clears throat> especially the work that I've been doing. Uh, my consulting company is Stone's Throw Consulting. And I've been involved in uh, many, many issues throughout the city, including the Main State Pier, where I had a front row seat to the fiasco there. Many of you probably witnessed that as well. Uh, I've also ran the, uh, the campaign to preserve the public library on Monument Square. And I have been involved up in Augusta on many, many issues, uh, including taxes, small business issues, um, and the environment, uh, renewable energy, so on and so forth. So yes, as a small business owner running a business, which has been key, earning a profit to make it so that it is viable. And it just so happens that I have the added benefit of working in policy, in, po in politics. And, and the consulting that I have been doing has been involved in many of the state's biggest issues. Ethan and I had an opportunity to work on Casino Snow. Uh, I've worked with many people in this room, including uh, Will Everett, the former director of the league. And, um, as you said, I did run that campaign last year to create the elected mayor, and uh, that in itself was a heck of a policy lesson. Thanks for the question, Ralph. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> okay, just one note to, you can only play a challenge card once, okay? There you go. 
Yeah. All right. I will play mine. Wait, no, we no. That's okay. That's okay. I can't do it anymore. I'm out. Okay. We have a little. We have a few minutes left in this round. So uh, here we go. I challenge. Got <laughs> it. Who do you challenge? I challenge Nick Mavadonis. Okay. Marcos Miller challenges Nick Mavadonis. Come on up. Nick, on Tuesday night, you pointed out that you got your start on the school committee, and since then you've served on the city council for 11 years, a sin significant number of them as mayor. You also said that you wanted to champion education. I'm a public school teacher, and I'm here to ask you, why is Hall School falling apart? Where has the leadership been in City Hall, from the mayor's office, and from you, on providing funds to reinvest and rebuild our schools? Very good question. Uh, thank you for offering that. As you mentioned, uh, I served on the school board for six years. I have a great deal of experience in moving forward building projects in the city of Portland. We renovated three middle schools under my leadership. I chaired that committee. We, re uh, we built the East End School. I chaired that committee as well. Um, the process, as you know as a teacher, is that the school department submits, uh, does a study and submits all of that to the state. Uh, the school department has done that. Unfortunately, our schools in Portland haven't rated high enough for the funding that's available. So we've been going through that state process in order to get, to get state funding. Um, I, and I think the rest of the city council, frankly, has been very supportive of moving that forward. If we get to the point that we very well may, we'll have to look backwards. And as we did with the middle schools and our high schools, we funded those renovations or, new, or new, in some cases new construction on the local dollar. And if the state does not come through, and they have not come through, I will lead that charge to do it on the local dollar. I've done it before, and I'll do it again. Thank you. Okay, Nick Mavadonis responding to Marcos Miller's question. Thank you. That is the end of this uh, challenge round and of this first group of three. So we want to thank Ralph Carmona, Marcos Miller, and Ethan Strimley. <laughs> group two, come on up. Surprise, it's all correct, right? Is that me? Yay. It's been triple checked, it should be. All right, we will start with Peter Bryant. Uh, first, could you please give your name, neighborhood, and your occupation, and then Ants have 90 seconds to answer what is the biggest challenge you will face as mayor of Portland, and how will you overcome it? Okay, Peter my Bryant. Name is, my name is Peter Bryant. I live on uh, Back Cove Estates. It's off Ocean Avenue. I'm a retired merchant seaman. I started in Portland uh, on the fireboat and I got off a ship in uh, December of 2010. I think the biggest challenge is gonna be for me is working with the city council. Yeah, I've watched them on TV. And if one person doesn't understand it, it gets tabled to the next meeting and it gets tabled. That's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen when I'm mayor. If there's one person that you explain it to three times and they still don't get it, you're taking the vote anyway and don't vote. If you don't understand it, get out of the way. So, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but here's another one, a little one, the challenge. If you want to build a shed in your backyard, it takes two months to get a building permit. Not going to happen. It's going to be one week. And by sitting in that, sitting up there, standing up there, watching how it works, when you put, you submit your application, you gotta wait a week for the fire department to come in, you gotta wait a week for the building inspector to come in, and my time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peter Bryant. <laughs> Our next candidate, Jill Dusen. I'm Jill Dusen. Uh, I live in North Deering. I am an attorney by training. I'm former director of the Bureau of Rehab Services for the state of Maine. And I'm currently a part-time seasonal employee with L.L. Bean. And what is your answer to what is the biggest challenge you will face as mayor of Portland and how will you overcome it? Well, uh, Portland is a successful city. 
Uh, and to build on that success, the mayor will have to have a full toolbox of leadership skills. The first challenge I will take on is to get buy-in from my concept of the mayor as ombudsman and advocate for residents and businesses. As chief ombudsman and advocate, I will personally engage, follow up, and see to the resolution of concerns and complaints about city services. I know that government can work and offer a value proposition for the tax dollars that support it. I know this because I've done it. I've taken on a public agency in trouble and worked with the employees of that agency to turn around a 10% budget deficit and eliminate an 11 month wait list for services. No employee of this city gets up in the morning thinking how can I frustrate the residents and businesses of Portland today. I will improve city services by taking on problems from the perspective of a customer. And together we will resolve issues faster, better, and for the long term. I know we can make government work for people because I've done it. I want to do it for Portland. Thank you. Jill Dusen. Okay, our third uh, in group two is Jed Rathband. Uh, I'm Jed Rathband, and I live over in East Bayside. And I'm the owner of Stone's Throw Consulting, as I mentioned in the before-mentioned question. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, what is the biggest challenge you think you will face as mayor of Portland, and how will you overcome it? Sure. Hands down, our budget is going to continue to be our most challenging issue uh, in the foreseeable future. We have a, 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 a budget of roughly $300 million, 100 of which goes to our schools alone. And last year, we lost a million dollars in state funding. That is going to continue for the foreseeable future. Now, we cannot afford to lose a dime in our schools, but yet we cannot afford to raise taxes. We've got to hold the line on that. Therefore, as uh, we've got to get smart with how we spend, and we've got to get innovative. As mayor, I will work hard every day to retain the businesses that we have in the city and work to attract the ones that we are actually capable of getting, putting our money into targeting the business that we can get. Um, I'll fight in Augusta, and I believe I'm in the best position to do that. I'm trusted on both sides of the aisle, and uh, most importantly, I don't have the political baggage that stymied efforts in the past to get our share. Our schools depend on it, our seniors depend on it, fire and safety depends on it, and we must continue to make the investments in our community that will attract human capital and businesses to our area. This challenge is an opportunity to create something sustainable for Portland, it will diversify our tax base for years to come. But we need new leadership to make this happen, and I believe I am that new leadership. I hope to earn your support, and please check out my website at jedformayor.com. Thank you. That was Jed Rathband, everyone. And now on to the wheel. Peter Bryant, will you do us the honors this time around? Maybe I'll get it right this time. Your timekeeper has a question. Oh. I just wanted to say that. Was I under that time? Uh, I'm really impressed with how um, cooperative all our candidates have been with the time. Isn't this really good? Housing. It's Apparently it's housing. Could I have the questions, please? Thank you. Okay, Peter Bryant, first question in housing for you is from the audience. Question. With the loss of federal LIHEAP funding, the program that offers subsidies I'm for sorry, heating... I, I, you, you, what was that again? With the loss of federal LIHEAP funding, LIHEAP being the program that offers subsidies for heating fuel, do you have a citywide plan to keep the heat on this winter when many low-income people lose that safety net? If yeah. yes, please describe. Yeah, listen to this one. <laughs> I got an we got a gold mine here in Portland, and we don't even know it. And why they're not advertising, I mean the gas company, natural gas. Bethel, Maine is paying a million dollars to run a five-mile line up to Bethel. They just ran it down Washington Avenue. They ran it up Exchange Street, and they're going to go up Congress Street. And natural gas is 40% cheaper than oil, and we got it here. We got to get the word out. To guys that have a pot, people that have apartments, change your furnaces over from oil, cost like a hundred bucks, from oil to natural gas, and you're going to save around 40 percent. 
<clears throat> if you were going to make an they, uh, if you were going to make an investment in oil, you have about a uh, fifteen percent risk factor. If you were going to invest in natural gas, there's a ninety percent risk factor because they're predicting natural gas is going down even more. Natural gas is not a good investment for a person investing, but it's a good thing to invest in if you're going to use natural gas, if you need heat. And we got it right here. Why the, why the gas company isn't having an ad in the paper? They predict they have 28,000 customers in, this, in the Portland area, and they expect 14,000 more. Mr. Bryant? Yep. Your time is up. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I sweet. Get into it. No. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jill Dusen, this question is from the audience. How do you propose to keep property taxes down? I'm worried about property taxes making our arts and culture suffer. Uh, well, I have uh, served on the Finance Committee. I've chaired the Finance Committee twice for the city. Um, the way that the city has kept property tax increases relatively moderate in a tough economic environment is that we go through that budget line by line, department by department. Uh, and in the past uh, three years, we have cut the budget. Um, and done the work around the table of trying to minimize uh, tax impact um, in order to, but part of the process is figuring out what we can stop doing and what we must keep on doing. Uh, and I think that if you look at the uh, results of the budget over the past three years, you'll see that we had a 1% increase, a 2% increase, and a flat uh, tax impact. <coughs> within the past three years. And that's a pretty, I think, a pretty astounding set of results given the economy that the uh, state has been trying to survive through, along with the city, for the past three years. Thank you. That was Jill Dusen. Jed Rathban, your question is also from the audience. Describe one policy you would implement to make it easier for young professionals to find affordable housing in Portland. Hmm, great question. If you look what's being built in the city today, it's not condominiums. Condominiums can't get funded anymore because the economy is in such bad shape. Builders and, um, and developers can't get financed. Therefore, what is actually able to happen is that we can build apartment buildings. And we're seeing it a lot, little pocket spots all over the city where they're actually commanding good rents and they can get them financed, and it's crucial. There's a spot over on Hanover Street that I know, uh, not Hanover, but on Hammond Street near my place uh, that's going to be done pretty soon as well. We have got to make it um, affordable, however, and what I see is a real disappointment in how we did the Adams School up on Munjoy Hill. That was a huge missed opportunity that does not produce affordable housing. Two acres of the most valuable land almost in the state of Maine, the most densely populated piece of land in the state, and all we're getting out of that is 16 units. That should be 60. And then we'll start talking about affordable housing. You cannot build affordably when all you do is build 16 units on a piece that big. So as mayor, what I would do is I would oversee how that is happening. I would work with the stakeholder groups. I would work with the developers. And I would make sure that the city is on track to really see what is our long-term goal and how are we going to meet that. Thank you. Thank you. That was Jed Rathbun. OK. we're. Uh... Thanks to group two for answering those questions in the category of housing. And now we're, we're going into the challenge round for group two. So um, here we go. I'm afraid Peter, Peter Bryant, you were, you were first. Uh, what, who is your question for? Chris Vale. Chris Vale, could you please step forward? <laughs> Chris Vale, North Daring. Chris, you're a firefighter, and in talking to the chief and, and going around the town doing my homework, when I see a fire engine, fire truck, heading down the road, 60 miles an hour, blasting away, and the kids all run to the curb, does that driver have a, have a license? Do they have, to have, do they have a license to drive that thing? 
What's the answer to that? You're going to grill me over a yes and no question? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's a licensed driver. No, they're not. State of Maine license. To drive are, a truck? You, you, you didn't ask me if it was a truck okay, driving well, license. They're driving a fire truck down the road. It's a state of have? Maine driver's license. Just a Maine driver's license, no truck license. Correct. I have a state of Maine driver's license as well. But you don't, okay, but you don't have a truck driver's license. You can't, you can't drive a truck. I have a state of Maine driver's license. Okay. Okay, thank you, Peter Bryant, Chris Vale. Are the remaining two candidates? Okay, Jed Rathbun, who do you uh, who do you challenge a question to? I've got a uh, question for Nick. <clears throat> Nick Mavadonis. Mayor Mavadonis. Is this going to happen every round? <laughs> <laughs> Only yeah, if yeah. you're lucky. Round, round, round two. <laughs> uh, Nick, as you know, I ran the campaign to create the elected mayor and you helped lead the opposition against it. You, re you repeatedly uh, characterized the position as overpriced and worthless. How will you create the changes necessary to address the challenges in our city when you hold the position in such low esteem? Fair question and good question. I'm not sure those were my exact words. Um, as many in the room know, uh, I did not vote for the proposal. Uh, I supported the work of the Charter Commission in fact, appointed as a city councilor some members of the Charter Commission. However, I didn't agree with the recommendations. Uh, I felt if we were going to have an elected mayor, and frankly, I should tell you, I thought there should be two questions. One should have been, do we have an elected mayor? The second should have been, do we elect that mayor by ranked choice voting? But that was not the recommendation of the Charter Commission. Um, I felt if we're going to have an elected mayor, it probably should be a stronger position, a stronger CEO type position. Uh, the ranked choice voting is something that we will see how it works out. In many large cities, they have a uh, runoff. Um, so I think the, the voters spoke, although it was by a close vote. The voters spoke and said that they wanted an elected mayor. The position uh, as described in the charter and recommended by the charter commission. Uh, I would work very hard. I think I bring uh, a set of skills that brings vision and leadership and experience in a lot of areas. So I think I would be one that fits that uh, profile very well. I would use that experience and that vision and that leadership uh, to move things forward. I think we have a lot of good things going in Portland, but we've got to do more to try to build a better future, and I see the signs are up. Okay. Thank you for the question. Thank you. That was Jed Rathbun challenging Nick Mavadonis. We want to thank Group 2, Peter Bryant, Jill Dusen, Jed Rathbun. <laughs> Give your name, uh, neighborhood, and occupation. My name's Charles Bragdon. I live in Munjoy Hill, and many of you know me as just a cab driver, but I'm also a publisher of the Portland Maine Gazette. And what is, uh, do you think is the biggest challenge that you will face as mayor of Portland, and how would you overcome it? I think my biggest challenge as a uh, first elected mayor of Portland is, number one, to get more people on board with the position, because there's a lot of people that opposed it, and there's a lot of people that still don't have a lot of support for it. So that's going to be the first hurdle to overcome, but that isn't the biggest one. The biggest one is to get the economic development of this city really restarted again, because right now it's stagnant. And we've stalled our economy to the point where we don't have a lot of local businesses starting up, a lot of small businesses. And that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to overcome that barrier and really focus on the small mom and pop kind of businesses and really get that anchor back on our economy and really build on that and try to focus our energies to make sure we have viable business plans being developed by these people that want to start businesses here. And I'm not talking about big businesses from away or small businesses from away. I'm talking about people like us creating our own businesses in this economy and making sure we make that happen. We have grant money available that's never been used at the city level to help mom and pop businesses that are creating new jobs. And I want to kick that into overdrive. I want people to know that we're serious as a city, as a people who want to support our people and help our economy really kick in where it needs to be. And I want to be the guy that markets to our people that we want your business here. We want you to be local people living here, vested in this community, and really know the cities behind you 180%, because that's the only thing we're going to do to really get our economy back on track and really get our economy recession proof. You can bring big, big businesses from away, but they don't bring jobs that put money in the local economy. They take money away from it. I want to put that money back in your pocket so you can spend it in our local economy, and we can make sure that our economy is viable and relevant and not something that is going to be stagnant for the next 20 years. That's what my biggest challenge is to overcome that. Thank you. That was Charles Bragdon. Our next candidate is uh, Jody Lapchik, please. Uh, your name, neighborhood, and occupation. Jody Lapchik. 
Uh, is this on? Okay, Jody Lapchick. My neighborhood is the West End, and my occupation is in, I'm an independent marketing strategist. And what is your answer to uh, what is the biggest challenge you will face as mayor of Portland, and how would you overcome it? Well, most of us agree, uh, the candidates and I agree, that our challenge is to grow the economy. I, however, have a vision and a plan to do this by reinforcing years of investment already made in building and promoting our creative economy. Achieving sustainable growth through our creative economy will help generate additional funds needed to improve our schools, our transportation system, including making our streets friendly to bicyclists and pedestrians, and the funds we need to provide necessary social services. I will embrace the challenge of finding sustainable solutions that protect our environment and our social and cultural resources. The solutions are out there. Many people have already done some great work and are doing some great work on solving some of our city's most critical issues. I plan to increase support and sharing of the many successful efforts already happening. I will engage nonprofit, corporate, and the public sectors while empowering our great neighborhoods to band together to preserve, improve, and promote our unique way of life. Thank you. Thank you. That was Jody Lapchick. Our third candidate in this group is Dave Marshall. Hey, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Dave Marshall, and uh, I am uh, from the West End. I am a, um, a fine artist, a gallery owner, a uh, property manager, a historic house restorationist, and a city councilor. <laughs> and what do you think will be the biggest challenge you would face as mayor and how would you overcome it? There's, a, there's an ancient philosophy that says that it's very, very hard to abolish an old form of government, but it's much, much harder to establish a new form of government. This is going to be the challenge that the new mayor is going to have. We'll no longer select our mayor you know, th or our chair through a process of councillors having a caucus. Instead, we're going through this process, a people-oriented process. Instead of picking up the phone and making four phone calls, you're going to have to take and go out and knock on 10,000 doors. And that's a lot of doors to knock on. And so as, as the elected mayor, my biggest challenge is going to be how we gain the, the public's confidence into this new form of government so we can move forward as one step, one community at the same time. In order to do this, I'm going to work extremely hard to bring the public into the process right off the bat. We're going to have a public dialogue about where we're going as a city. We're going to make sure that the values and the goals I have as a, as a mayor candidate are in line with your goals as well. These goals include investing in our school buildings to make them state-of-the-art learning facilities, growing our population near the downtown and in our business corridors in order to spread out the tax burden, and getting the majority of our buildings off of oil. These are my goals as, as your mayor. That was Dave Marshall. Thank you to the three candidates for their opening statements. And now, Charles Bragdon, would you please spin the wheel for us? <laughs> oh, well, this is great. We're getting different categories. This is great. Leadership and advocacy is the category. And here are the questions. We'll start with you, Charles Bragdon. This is a question from the League Elections Committee. How do you plan to use the bully pulpit aspect of the office of elected mayor to represent the constituents of Portland? I'd probably start by flogging the councilors. No, I'm kidding. Uh, what, I, what I would do, number one, is I would start by meeting with all of the directors and the city manager because I think the first thing a mayor should do is understand the people he's trying to lead and the people that are leading with him. So that would be my first step is to meet with the city, the, the city councilors, the directors of different departments, and the city manager and get everybody on the same page of where the people's vision is for where Portland needs to go and really try to bring that all into one ball that we can roll around for a while and really start the development process and get things moving where they need to go because this is a George Washington position for Portland and we need to recognize it as that, that this is our pioneer stage for our new local government and we need to really take that leadership position and know that maybe the strength that this position carries isn't strong, but the 
the direction they're going to take it is going to be strong. And we need to make sure we find where that is with the people, not just with the, the politicians and the directors and the bureaucrats that are running things, but the people out there that put us in that position and make sure we're all on the same page and developing what the city feels is a plan we all want to be a part of, not just what some of us think we should be a part of. So I think that's where I would go with it. I would meet with the, the people involved. I would meet with the people out here. I would have very large groups come to neighborhood meetings, I would hope, to really help shape this vision. I know there's a vision already being shaped of where this mayor position is going to be, but I think my time is up. Okay. <laughs> that was Charles Bragdon. The category is leadership and advocacy, and this question is from the League Elections Committee, and this is for Jody Lapchik. What is the number one outside obligation or commitment that you have which you would need to balance with your role as a full-time mayor? This is so easy for me because I have no life, so I guess I would have to say my husband is the only outside obligation. <laughs> I have, a, well, actually, and I have a daughter who's, who's just recently engaged. I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I plan on devoting my entire uh, waking hours, and, and you can ask anyone who knows me, I'm a bit of a workaholic, and so this is sort of going to be my passion day and night for four years. Okay, that was Jody Lapchick. All right, in the, the third candidate here, in the category of leadership and advocacy, uh, the question for Dave Marshall is, besides promoting Portland as a, quote, foodie town, what ideas do you have to bring this city to wider national prominence? The city of Portland has a very, very special thing. What we have here is a great group of people in this city. Together, we, we collectively have an amazing creative talent. We need to reinvest our creative talents back into the economy. We need to use it by, by growing our arts and culture, by creating new inventions. This is the way of the future. Right now, we're seeing jobs being shipped overseas for pennies on the dollar. Right now, there are more jobs in arts and culture in the state of Maine than there are the wood products industry. And the creative economy is growing by leaps and bounds. 20% of our economy is now in this creative economy sector. And we have a huge amount of, of opportunity here to, to all work together in order to harness this creative talent and to market it on an international scale. We shouldn't be the place that you're just going to come and eat a lobster. We should be the place where you're going to, to get that rich cultural experience that you've, ever, that you've always wanted. And we should be developing new products here, and we should be selling those products overseas and around the country. To be a net exporter of creative, uh, of creative products, that's where our future is. As a, as a city councilor, I've championed this issue. And as your mayor, I will as well. That was Dave Marshall on the question of leadership and advocacy. And now we go into our challenge round. Each candidate has been given a challenge card. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, uh, when I ring my bell, the first person to show the card will be able to challenge. So here we go. I think it was Jody. Oh, I think it was, was it. Jody Lapchick. Hey, who do you challenge? My challenge is for Mike Brennan. Mike Brennan, can you come forward, please? It may be a, it may be a softball. <laughs> Well, I can give a hardball answer. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. I'm Michael Brennan. I live in Back Cove in Portland. My question for you is, uh, you're going to do a lot for the city of Portland in Augusta. Thank you. You can stop right there. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's an endorsement. It, 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 that's an endorsement. <laughs> it, you're going to represent our city in Augusta and in D.C., and I'm wondering what your plan is for engaging in the neighborhood issues and the potholes and, and all of the sort of down in the trenches yep. uh, issues that are city, that the city council tends to deal with. Great. Well, thank you. And, and uh, thank you for acknowledging that I am going to do good work in Augusta and <laughs> represent us well in Washington, D.C. I appreciate that. But I'm going to do the same things that I've been doing for the last 35 years I've lived in Portland. And, and that is to work in neighborhoods, work in the communities, and address the nitty-gritty issues that uh, are so important to residents of Portland. And I've been a commissioner on the Portland Housing Authority where we've dealt with all kinds of housing issues, had to pave roads, 
had to deal with snow removal and had to deal with actually being the biggest landlord in the city uh, of Portland. Um, I've also worked for United Way of Greater Portland where we've addressed, addressed issues that had to do with um, uh, elderly housing. We've, uh, okay, I'm still green. Okay, I'm sorry, I keep looking at you and I'm looking at the other thing. Um, but I've had a long, um, uh, a lot of experience in dealing with those very nitty gritty issues. And clearly as a state senator and state representative, on a regular basis I had people call me and ask me, can you help me with your social security? Can you help me with child support? And can you help me with a number of state programs? I, I, I still got a couple Ten more seconds. seconds. Okay, <laughs> well thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Mike. That was uh, Jody Lapchick challenging Mike Brennan. All right, we uh, have time for one more challenge. Let's go. I think it was Dave. Thank Dave you. Marshall. Who are you challenging? I'm going to challenge um, uh, Councillor Nick Mavadonis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for keeping what? my streak up, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I read in the Portland Press Herald recently that you're advocating for bringing tar sands to the city of Portland. Uh, by reversing the flow, of the Portland Pipeline from Montreal to the Port of Portland. Now, this is, tar sands are the mo, the, is a highly volatile form of oil. This is the dirtiest oil in the world. It has a carbon footprint where its emissions are 30% greater than common crude oil. Now, Councillor, how are we going to do that in, when we're looking at our comprehensive plan and we know that we just adopted the Environmental Sustainability Report, how are we going to bring tar sands to the City of Portland and keep that consistent? A good question, Councillor, and, and thank you for asking it. Actually, Claire asked me that the other night. Um, and just to put it into context, I was uh, called by a reporter and asked about uh, economic activity in the waterfront. And the question was about uh, the Portland Pipeline, which frankly I've, I've dealt with over the years and is a very fine organization. And uh, said, how would you, how would you uh, feel about more ships coming into the harbor? Uh, there's an opportunity to bring product, uh, oil product back from Canada, which I knew very little about at the time. And thank you, I don't have to recite some of the things that I've learned since I was, it was suggested the other night that I look up tar sands. Um, so that gives me the same concern that you do. Uh, the issue I was asked about was economic activity in the harbor, and as I answered, uh, when you can bring more ships to the harbor, it's like bringing more good jobs to Portland. Uh, you bring more ships, you have uh, more jobs along the waterfront. Uh, Portland, South Portland, uh, and that is for a variety of purposes. Could be tugboats, pilots, um, other things that are brought to ships, ship chandlers. So I have concern about the tar sands. I, th I thank you for raising it and giving me a chance to, to uh, talk about it. Claire brought it to me the other night and uh, I uh, have looked it up and uh, I still want to see more ships coming into the harbor but the tar sands would give me concern. So thank you. Okay, thank you. That was um, Dave Marshall challenging Nick Mavadonis and I'm told we, we have time for a third challenge. So um, Charles Bragdon. Well, if I knew that I would have told Nick not to sit down. <laughs> Who do so you my challenge is for Nick Mavadonis. <laughs> you know, other people would like airtime. <laughs> As one of the longest seated councillors in the city of Portland, Nick, uh, other than Cheryl Lehman, probably the only one running for mayor that has the, uh, the, the term value that you have over 11 years, I, I want to know what you're going to do different than the status quo to move us forward over the next four years because in 11 years, you've had an opportunity to bring forward a vision that we can't bring forward in four years. So you've had an 11-year opportunity to make Portland better than what it is, and we're stagnant right now. So I'm wondering what you're going to do different than the status quo that's going to bring us out of the stagnation our economy is feeling. Thank you, Charles. Another good question. Um, I've been on the city council for actually 14 years um, and uh, served, as I said, for a couple of years on the school board. Um, the city council works as a, as a team. There are nine of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Decisions are made by majority. Mm -hmm. um, I am very proud of a lot of decisions that I have helped either vote on or bring people together to make over the years. Mm -hmm. um, this is a different position. Uh, mayors currently serve for one year. Uh, Jill has been a mayor. There are others who have been mayors. Um, my great grandfather used to tell me when I was a kid, it's tough to juggle two watermelons. And Greeks eat a lot of watermelon. Um, you think of that trying to juggle your full-time job 
and being a city councilor, or your full-time job and being a mayor. So you have to work as a team. Um, I'm running because, as I said before, I think I bring that experience, the leadership, and the vision. The things that I would work on are certainly, we've talked about it tonight, jobs. We need to create jobs. If we're, if we're going to have more people living here, we're going to have more housing, we need to create jobs and bring people here. I would work hard on education. I've done that in the past. I'm proud of many of the things that I would done, but that would be a focus for me. Uh, another big focus is we have to have a healthy city. If you look around, we have one in three children in Cumberland County are obese or overweight. That is wrong. That is phenomenal, and we need to do something about it. So that's what, some of the things I'd be working on, and I'm out of time. Okay, thank you. That was Charles Bragdon challenging Nick Mabadonis. We want to thank Group 3, Charles Bragdon, Jody Lapchick, and Dave Marshall. Thank you. Okay, group four, come on up. Flip your signs All over, right. please. Okay, we're going to start with uh, Mike Brennan. We need, uh, need you to introduce yourself and your neighborhood and your occupation. And then you have 90 seconds to answer what is the biggest challenge you would face as mayor and how would you overcome it? Thank you. My name is Michael Brennan. I live in Back Cove and I'm a policy associate at the Muskie School of Public Service at the University of Southern Maine. And similar to some of the other candidates, I just want to thank the league for having this event. Um, it's really a terrific opportunity for us to all talk about things that we think are important. And secondly, I'd like to ch thank Lucid uh, uh, Stage for also hosting this and having this event here. It's been, really been terrific. Um, I, I don't know if the challenge is so much for me as mayor uh, moving forward. It's a challenge for us as a community how we move forward. And I want to just tell a quick story. I, I was born in Portland. I didn't have the opportunity to grow up in Portland. My father lost his job when I was young, and he had to move the whole family out of the city and out of state in order to find another job. I was fortunate as an adult to come back to Portland, and I've lived here for the last 35 years, raised two children, and had the opportunity to work here. So I think one of the greatest challenges that we face is to make sure that every person in this city has the opportunity to live in this city, to prosper in this city, and be part of that, this city. And it doesn't matter whether you're a homeless person, whether you're an artist, whether you're a business person, whether you're an educator, you should be able to raise a family, to have a place in this community. Portland has a reputation for a city that embraces diversity, that's compassionate, and that has a big heart. And I want to make sure that going forward, we continue to have those values and that we develop a budget that reflects those values. Thank you very oh, much. Sorry. <laughs> that was Michael Brennan. Thank you for your opening statement. Our next candidate is Hamza Haddo. Your name, your neighborhood, and your occupation, please. Thank you so much. My name is Hamza Haddo. I live East Deering. Uh, I work for a Goodwill um, Assistant Sustainability and Recycling Operation. Uh, the biggest challenge that we do have as a city is, you know, the economic, which includes jobs, and also uh, education system, which is great, but we can make it better. So how should I fix it as a mayor? Uh, we want to think about not today only, but for the future next 20 years, next 30 years, the generation of Portland will change. Portland is getting more diverse, how we will accommodate. And also, uh, the world is flattening. You know, the American dream, every country is picking up American dream. How we will face that challenge? Should we fight or should we think about today and accommodate our future generations the work that they need to do today. So as a mayor, I will you emphasize uh, the education system, early education system, going and visiting our schools. I haven't seen any you know, uh, mayor or city leader who will go and 
talk to the children, the younger children, and also, uh, you know, our homeless, our unfortunate people, our low-income people. If we educate them, they will contribute more for the future. I came to this country with only high school education, and I'm right now, I do have, uh, you know, decent job. Thank you so much. The time's okay. up, so. Very good. Thank you. That was Hamza Hado. Thank you. Chris Vail is our third candidate. My name is Chris Vail. I live in the North Daring area, and it's already been established that I work for the Portland Fire Department. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a main license, right? Evidently, it comes along with the job. <laughs> yeah. Let's put, so what, what is your answer to the question, what is the biggest challenge you will face as mayor of Portland, and how will you overcome it? I have tons of goals. But I think at the very core, everybody's a little foolish to think if a challenge isn't going to be the city council. As we've already realized and recognized, it's been brought up a few times tonight, the city council's met this position with resistance. And I think, first of all, working with that resistance, uh, um, as a full-time mayor, I'm going to be working against the resistance that city hall has already established and the city councilors have established. One thing I'm sick of is just a citizen of this country is the notion of reaching across the aisle. A term born of politicians, born of government, and born of politics. We should all be frustrated by this notion because it's them who built it. And they built it to a point now that they're forced to look at it and recognize that we're all sick of it. So I, I think people who reach across the aisle are adults. I look at everybody in this room, I've heard a few young cries, but we're all adults and we should act like it. What I search for is streamlining City Hall. I search for accountability in City Hall. I wanna be the name and the face for four years on City Hall that says, it's my right, it's my wrong. Tell me what I'm doing. At the end of four years, if you don't like me, pass me on, but I'm done with the shell game of City Hall and City Council, nobody having accountability or a name on an idea. I'll be the face and I'll be the leader of the city of Portland as, as your mayor. Thank you, that was Chris, Chris Vale. Okay, and now, Mike Brennan, could you spin the wheel? Oh. <laughs> well, I don't think we've had that yet. Justice, justice is the category, may I have the questions? All right. I think our wheel needs some WD-40 or something, I'm not. <laughs> All right, Michael Brennan, the category is justice. The question is from the United Way. And the question is, the city of Portland has been a leader and partner with other organizations to address the needs of homeless people in greater Portland. The lack of affordable housing is a major contributing factor to homelessness. What is your commitment to helping people in need in our community? And what ideas do you have for addressing the critical issue of homelessness? Well, uh, I'm glad that that's a question that came from United Way. I worked for the United Way for seven years. And while I worked for the United Way, we created the Cumberland County Affordable Housing Venture. I was a founding member for specific purpose of creating affordable housing for people who had been homeless. I also started the Emergency Shelter Assessment Committee that has played a monitoring role within the community to make sure that there's enough affordable housing, I mean, there's enough homelessness, uh, not enough homelessness, <laughs> there's enough housing for homeless persons. And I'm proud to say that a number of years ago, the city of Portland made a commitment to the community. And what they said is, no person on any given night would not have a place to stay in Portland. And we've stuck to that commitment for the last 20 years and basically said, on any given night in Portland, there will be enough opportunities for people who are homeless to at least have a shelter. But we have to do better. And doing better means that just providing a shelter bed is not enough. We need to create affordable housing opportunities throughout the, state, throughout the city. And probably the best example is what Preble Street Resource Center is doing now with their Housing for First program with Logan Place and with Florence House. And those have been extraordinarily successful programs in helping people who have been homeless find permanent living situations. Pardon? I'm saving the city money in the meanwhile. I'm sorry. You, <laughs> thank you for helping me answer the question. Anybody else in the audience must contribute too. <laughs> yes. Okay, that was Michael Brennan. 
All right, the category is justice. This question is from the audience for Hamza Hado. What would you do to meet the needs of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, and queer youth in Portland? Thank you for asking me that question. Uh, the first thing is everyone deserves to live the life he or she Jews. So uh, to emphasize that everyone has a lifestyle that want to adopt. And I will encourage everyone to adopt the lifestyle that, you know, uh, that person Jews. Uh, saying, saying of that, uh, what we need is there is a different cultures, beliefs, also need which, you know, need is to be respected. And as a mayor, I will support, you know, every group to celebrate their differences, to bring together and to be united for the common goal, for the future that we need to be a one community. Whether we came yesterday or whether, you know, we had a chance to be born and raised in here. And, you know, uh, we want to be an equal, whether it become an employ, uh, you know, employment, whether it become uh, education, whether it become, you know, every aspect of life. We are human and we, live, we, well, we have to live, you know, the dream that we have chosen to live in, what we call American dream, that no one will bother, you know, anyone else. Just, you know, everyone needs to be a successful and adopt the life that he wants. Thank you. That was Hamza Hado. All right. Our last uh, question in the category of justice for Chris Vale is also from the audience. What are the challenges that people of color in Portland face? And what programs or initiatives would you propose to address them? I think it goes back to just our general sense of equality. Um, I think still what we need in the city of Portland is education. Education on everybody's behalf. Education in City Hall. I think we need to realize, b besides the diversity in our city, just the diversity in our country. It's not restricted just to here to the city of Portland. Our country is diverse in a million different ways. And I think half of our problem is the diversity, the, the crowds, the, the different sect, doesn't know how to embrace the other. They don't know how to engage with the other. And it doesn't matter if it's color, ra race, religions, when, whatever it is. I don't even know if from within we educate ourselves enough. I say within, I'm not in City Hall yet. But I think even in City Hall we need to educate. And by education, I think starting with the children is great. I, I like some of the ideas and notions of we need to really work on language. It's our, one of our first primal, how we get in touch with each other. I think these ideas of education have to grow from our children. I see it working in the fire department. We go to many houses. We talk to the kids first. They learn education in schools, and they communicate with their parents. I think the more diverse we are, the more educated we become through the process. And I think we engage and embrace each other as citizens of this country. Thank you. All right. That was Chris Vale. Thank you very much. And now, um, we are, are we ready for the challenge round? Here we go. Okay. I'm a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Vale, who are you challenging? I guess Michael, since you're here, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll deal with you. <laughs> well, Chris, I have a driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> it's a main driver's license. <laughs> I think some of the candidates are starting to understand my frustration. I hope I voice some of the frustration of American citizens. We're frustrated with government. We're frustrated with politicians. We're frustrated with politics. So I ask you maybe to represent a large crowd over to my left. What as career politicians is going to change to help the city of Portland and get us off the treadmill and get us to progress and not fight with each other and look to the future instead of arguing and staying right where we are today? Um, <laughs> well, I agree with you. And, and um, I, I think if you know anything about me, and what I've done in the community for the last 35 years, um, that you've seen that I've been a very progressive force within the community and to help address a lot of the issues um, that we've faced in the city of Portland. I also uh, did have the opportunity to represent Portland and Augusta um, as both uh, a state legislator and as a, a state senator. 
Uh, I'm happy to say, and I wanted to clarify something that Mayor, Mayor Mavadonis didn't quite get right, um, but the city uh, just had two schools funded fully with state money. And it's because I helped rewrite the school funding formula to allow for Portland to get money for school construction. When I was chair of the education committee, it was the first time, first time in the history of the state and the city that we received funding for English language learners. We also got the most money that we've ever received from the state in school funding when I was chair of the education committee. So if you think that's the type of politician that you don't want, <laughs> Um, then maybe there are some other people that you might point to. But I have a record, I think, that has been extraordinarily beneficial for the city of Portland, and I would be a type of mayor that, has, um, that, that would help the city of Portland move forward in ways that I have for the last 35 years. Okay, that was Chris Vale challenging Michael Brennan. We have time for another uh, challenge round. I, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> He can't, uh, you only get one challenge, sorry. Ask the same question. Can I get a rebuttal? <laughs> 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 a rebuttal question? Nobody else wants to play? No one, yeah. We're going to, well, what, you have a challenge? Well, well <laughs> I, I'll ask Jody Lapchick. Okay, we have um, a challenge. Michael Brennan challenges Jody Lapchick. Jody, come on up. Jody, what, what do you think is the greatest attribute that you would bring to this position? Well, you gave me an easy question. So right. <laughs> um, trying to think where to start. Uh, I, I think that the attributes that I bring, uh, the, the greatest attribute I bring um, would be the experience that I gained in running a small business with 10 employees and having clients with many stakeholders involved and trying to get people to work together and buy into an idea and like and get behind an idea. And if it was my idea and people didn't get behind it, then we would go back and forth until I was sure that they were that, that they had a better idea, and then we would work with their idea. So it was an it was an idea driven company, and I think that the city needs an idea driven mayor to bring people together and figure out how to get ideas sold, so that everybody can get excited and nobody's doing something that they don't want to be doing. Okay, that was Michael Brennan with uh, ch challenging. Jody Lapchick. All right, thank you to group four, Michael Brennan, Hamza Haddo, and Chris Vale. All right, so we are ready. Are we ready for our final round? All right. Group five, welcome to the stage. You've been paid, well, you haven't been patient. You've been talking. Um, please, <laughs> I'm just teasing. All right, so we, let's start with Richard Dodge. Please uh, introduce yourself by name, neighborhood, occupation. I'm Richard Dodge, and I live out on Out of Forest Avenue by Warren Avenue. And I own Sam's Great Northern Lobster Bakes and Catering, and I'm also a commercial broker. And what do you think is the biggest challenge you will face as mayor of Portland, and how will you overcome it? Well, I think my biggest challenge is... Uh, many will see is the attitude of the current and the past administrations uh, on, in the planning boards. Uh, they have created a culture in the city that is uh, how can we stop this project as opposed to how can we help this project go through. Uh, as many of you have witnessed uh, the many businesses that have moved out of town or haven't come here because of the roadblocks put in their way. Uh, to recap, it will be how to change the attitude at City Hall I think is our biggest challenge. Uh, we need to uh, streamline the whole process, and we need to change some department heads if it's necessary so we have more positive people that are thinking positive ideas. My goal is to seek common sense uh, regulations that don't tie up the process of, a, of building new businesses. Uh, we need to elect the planning board. We've been appointing them way too long and they are uh, appointed by the city council. It's not working. We all see that. We need jobs here. That's our biggest thing going on right now. And we need to stop running the city like a charity and start running it like a business. Thank you. Okay, that was Richard Dodge speaking. Next candidate is uh, John Eater. Could you give us your name, neighborhood, occupation, and answer the question about the biggest challenge and how you overcome it? I'm John Eater. I'm from the west end of Portland. I am a community organizer. I uh, work with the homeless, the drug addicted, and the mentally ill. Uh, I'm a student. 
uh, and I have several other jobs like everybody else in Portland. The most challenging thing for us is going to be, for us collectively, is going to be changing the culture at City Hall so that we can make it reflect our collective imagination of the city of our highest values and our highest ideals. Now, thanks to what we've all accomplished, the League, us, everybody in this room, we have a full-throated collective voice in the elected mayor so that we can make ourselves heard. I don't know about you, but I'm hearing a lot of the same old, same old up here. I'm not sure the old guard gets it. I think they need to hear from us about the Portland, the Portland that we're experiencing. The Portland we're experiencing, people have multiple jobs, and they're living stacked up like cordwood in substandard apartments, struggling to meet their basic needs. Our Portland is the Portland of working people who make this city go, who make it vital, who give it style, who make and enjoy art, who pour your coffee, who bag your groceries by day. I'm all for the creative economy, but I want to make it work for regular working people. Portland is in danger of becoming the cool scene that never was because working people who make it cool, you, can hardly get a foothold in the real economic development I'm, I'm promoting is getting 1,000 units of affordable housing underway in the first term. For people who aren't eligible for subsidies, right here on the peninsula, so we can live sustainably downtown and support local businesses. We can get behind that by creating a tax break for its creation. And when we give that tax break, we'll require that those companies pay livable wage jobs to their employees. Most people in Portland, I, Mr. I know, Eater, don't, don't I'm so have... I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. You're Thank out of you. time. Thank you. That was John Eater. Our third candidate, Nick Mavadonis. Um, your, your name, your neighborhood, and your occupation, please. Uh, thank you. Nick Mavadonis. I live on Chenery Street in the Back Cove neighborhood. I'm the operations manager at Casco Bay Lines. And what do you think will be your greatest challenge as mayor, and how will you overcome it? Well, I also want to uh, thank all of you for putting this together this evening. This has gone um, quite well. Um, not that I was skeptical. Um, but it has gone very well, and, uh, and to lucid stage, as, as others have mentioned, uh, this is uh, very good for the community, and, and I really appreciate the ability to participate. Um, there have been a lot of uh, uh, good comments made tonight, I think, uh, answering this question. Um, and as I've thought about it, uh, for me, I'm thinking a little more outside of the city in terms of biggest challenge. Uh, I've had the opportunity, and probably there are only a few of you in the room, um, to meet with the governor. And the governor's policies uh, have been interesting, uh, to say the least, for the city of Portland. And uh, that is true of the legislature. Uh, so I think one of the biggest challenges is going to be working outside of the city. There will be challenges inside, and many of them have me been mentioned this evening. Um, but the mayor needs to, st to strategically work uh, in Augusta. And you could spend a lot of time in Augusta, and you could waste a lot of time in Augusta. But I think uh, I would be a mayor, and I've shown this in my uh, past experience, um, not only as a city councilor and school board member, uh, I've been a union negotiator, I've been the president of the Maine Municipal Association, have worked to bring people from different parts of the state together. And I would do that uh, as the mayor. I would work uh, on, my time is up. No, you have 10 seconds. <laughs> I have 10 seconds. I would, I would work to, to, to work with legislators in Augusta in a strategic way and the governor. Okay, that was Nick Mavadonis. Thank you for your opening statements. Um, now, Mr. Dodge, could you do the honors, please? Give it a good yeah. whack. It's tightening up the oh. You're the last one. If you break it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Woo, neighborhood development. May I have the questions, please? All righty. Neighborhood development is the category. This question is from the audience. This is for Richard Dodge. What has your involvement been in your own neighborhood community, and what have you learned from it? My involvement in uh, my particular neighborhood, I've been there uh, 22 years. Uh, it's been, uh, I've worked with a lot of the uh, elderly, and uh, I, I was on the uh, Portland Housing Authority Commission uh, with Mike, as a matter of fact, during that time. Uh, across the way from us, we have a uh, affordable housing uh, for people that have uh, uh, mental disabilities, physical disabilities, and such. And uh, we advocated for that. Uh, back uh, when they were building that and, and helping people uh, get around the neighborhood. I do think that uh, we need to 
uh, do something about the transportation system in our neighborhood especially uh, we're not uh, meeting those needs and I think that would be the one of the things that I would address because there are a lot of low-income people that live out near us and the, the big metro buses are not cutting it so we would like to work on that okay that was Richard Dodge thank you very much and uh, John Eder uh, this question is also from the audience so much attention is placed on the peninsula how would you represent our other neighborhoods well, uh, I, I would focus uh, the, the affordable housing on the peninsula so that we can, uh, so that we can uh, support local businesses here in town and live sustainably. But what I've been hearing from people who live off the peninsula, they have a couple of issues that are important to them that are really important to me. I've heard two things. People would like a bus system th that was more vital so that they could also live sustainably even though they live off of the peninsula. One thing that I have been proposing for many years and have been working on is getting it, and I'd like to work with uh, the schools so that we can make it so that kids in Portland who are uh, over the age of in high school take the uh, public transportation to get back and forth to school. This is one simple way that we can build good habits, that we can get, uh, we can get more people riding the bus, and that we build the future uh, of uh, public transportation in our city. We know that it's not used very well and very uh, effectively, and this is one simple way. I've never lived in a big city where the kids are bused uh, to school in high school. They should be learning how to take the bus, and this way uh, we can make living off Peninsula as sustainable as it is to live on Peninsula. Thank you. That was John Eder. And our uh, third question in the category of neighborhood development is from Portland Trails. This is for Nick Mavadonis. As you know, Portland Trails is a private nonprofit organization that works closely with the city on many projects, but it is not funded by the city. When, with the city's elimination of a separate parks and recreation department a few years ago and continued cutbacks to the remaining staff in the public services and public facilities departments, how do you think the city can best support parks and trails in our community in both the short and long term? Good question from our friends at Portland Trails. Um, first of all, I should tell you that um, I was not a big supporter of eliminating our parks and recreation department. Um, it had been done, as I'm told, 25 or so years ago. Uh, it didn't work well at that time. Uh, a council before me brought that back as a separate department, and I think eventually, in the long term, that's what I would like to see happen. Um, we've talked about budget issues, um, but our budget is where we set our priorities. So the decision that we make as elected officials, and I and other elected officials here have a record, um, and you can look back and see what those decisions were. Um, but I uh, would look, in the long term, to try to bring back a separation of uh, parks and recreation as a, its own division. In the short term, we need to do things like we did last night at the city council meeting uh, where we're renovating and actually there was a press conference today about it. Um, rehabilitating is the right word, uh, the Kochmar organ at the Merrill Auditorium. Uh, and that is being partially funded, actually half of the funding is done uh, through a fundraising campaign by the Friends of the Kochmar. The city is paying for half of that through a bond. But we need to have partnerships, and those partnerships are how we have to move forward with uh, whether it's Deering Oaks or it's a new park uh, or a new trail out at Thompson's Point. Okay, thank you. That was Nick Mavadonis speaking. And now, are we ready? Ready, ready. for the challenge thing? Okay, all right. <laughs> easy, John, easy. I think John, John Eder, who are you right. challenging? Kind of cross the plane, Nick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what I have to do? Who, who would you like to challenge? I'd like to uh, speak with uh, Councillor Dusen, please. Jill Dusen, please come up. Jill, thank you for your service. You're welcome. My pleasure. The question I have for you is the League and I supported uh, an initiative for non-immigrant voting status because we believe there's no better way to welcome the new immigrant community into Portland than to give them voting rights in local elections because they pay taxes and they should be able to uh, have representation in the schools and so forth in local elections. I understand, my understanding at the time is that you were not supportive of that. And, I, and I'd like you to tell us why that you don't support inviting immigrants into our conversation as a community. I fully support inviting immigrants into our conversation as a community, and I go out to immigrant communities and engage in those conversations myself. I don't wait for people to come to me. Um, I 
believe that voting, it's okay for voting to be a privilege of citizenship. So on that single issue, I disagree with the position taken by the League of Young Voters. And I uh, didn't mince words or pander or pretend like I believed it or, uh, you know, I was straight up about it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. That was John Eder challenging Jill Dusen. Thank you both. It's half a loaf. <laughs> oh. Did you want to say something else? No. I'm okay. Good. okay. Okay. For the remaining two candidates, um, if you want to challenge, here we go. <laughs> okay. Nick Mavadonis, who would you like to challenge? I can't believe I got to challenge someone. <laughs> I'd like to challenge John Eder. And I'll try to see if I get this right. Um, more troubling than some of the things that the uh, governor has said are some of the policies that have been towards Portland. And on your website, you say something to the effect that having a mayor with a long tenure in the legislature would seriously hobble the city. Could you elaborate on that thought and talk about how having a nonpartisan elected official uh, who has served the city uh, might better benefit? Well, I think that me being uh, a green highest elected Green, thanks to the League in the Nation, twice, thank you. Uh, I think the point that I was trying to make there, that I wonder, being a partisan Democrat, how uh, partisan Democrats are going to go, for, in the short run, deal with a, uh, a very staunch conservative Republican, and how that might hurt our representation in Portland. I think that I'd be a much better uh, person to represent Portland, because we won't, we'll just be two people relating as people, not as uh, oppositional party people. And that's the point I was trying to make. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was Nick Mavadonis challenging John Eater. Uh, I've been told we do have time for a third challenge. Richard Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Did I, did I break the plane? We, who would you like to challenge, please? Uh, oh, I'm going to have to do Nick. Everybody else has. <laughs> What's your question? My, my question is, uh, having been in City Hall 14 years, uh, and nothing has changed. In fact, it's got worse since I moved down here as far as businesses that have left town and the surrounding communities. But you're telling us now that you've seen the light, and now you, you're saying, I want to bring businesses here, I want to do this, but after 14 years, you haven't accomplished that. And you, your uh, reasoning was, well, I was working with the city council. Well, I don't think the city council is working at all. So. How are you going to change that now? Well, I would say that uh, I think we live in a great city. And uh, I'm proud of the businesses that we have brought. All you have to do is look, I think, in that direction to Thompson's point, And you'll see something that uh, I and uh, I brought people together to talk about that. Our councils unanimously supported that. Uh, over the years, uh, I look around the city and I'm very pr proud of the businesses that have come here and all we really have to do I think is look in the last few months Portland has been ranked by the AARP as one of the 10 best cities in the United States for people to retire. Very impressive. You also will take note that, and I think it was Forbes, but this is one of the 10 best cities in all of the United States for young people to come. Now there are whole host of other indices. One that I'm particularly proud of is that we, on the sedentary list, we are number seven, where from the top, we are one of the uh, top 10 best cities in terms of people who get out and get active. As I mentioned earlier, we have a long way to go because we have one in every three children or child is, uh, is obese or overweight. So I haven't seen the light in any way. I have been living this, doing this in my time on the city council. And we've brought a lot of good business here. Uh, Portland is a wonderful city. We've got all kinds of good things going, and we have to keep that happening. Okay, thank you. That was Richard Dodge challenging Nick Mavadonis. We want to thank Group 5, Richard Dodge, John Eater, Nick Mavadonis. Thanks to Lee for putting this on. Wow, we did it. We made it. And I want to um, thank all of the candidates very much. All 15 candidates are here tonight to talk to you. Also, before you go, I just want to uh, thanks again to all of our sponsors. Don't forget uh, how great these institutions are in our community. WMPG Community Radio. 
Bicycle Coalition of Maine, Maine People's Alliance, and all of the fabulous neighborhood associations, East Deering, Western Promenade, Riverton, University Neighborhood, and Munjoy Hill, and Libby Town, all those great neighborhoods. And also a special thanks, of course, to Lucid Stage for hosting us tonight. Again, I'm Suzanne Murphy from WMPG. On behalf of the League of Young Voters, thank you all very much for coming. And for please remember to fill out and return your ballots to the people in the red t-shirts. Portland is making history. Be a part of it. Good night.